Uh, morning, uh, my name is Eduardo. Again, I work for Scilabs, uh, and I'm here to give a quick update on what's new on Singularity since last year. So uh, we had Michael Bauer last year here at POSEM at the HPC track. So I'm here to talk more about what's changed since that, since that day. So a quick, brief history. So for the people that doesn't know about Singularity, it was invented by Greg Carcer in the National Laboratories uh, back in 2015. Uh, in October, around something about October, uh, people asking really how can they take their own environment from their desktops, their workstations, to the uh, infrastructure cluster. Uh, the first really release, like the 1.0, was some point around April of 2016. And thanks to user feedback and open source contribution, and that's kind of when I started to contribute to Singularity also, it got into a 2.0 in June of 2016. Uh, but after that, things are going pretty, pretty fast, and Greg founded Scilabs last year in January, and we are now around 28 engineers and working uh, day by day making Singularity better and trying to get user feedback on how can Singularity help them uh, do their work faster. And this talk is going to be focused around our release 3.0 that was released in October last year and comes with a lot of new features, more stability for users, and a new language update so open source contributions can jump in easily than it was before 3.0. So a quick thank you to all the open source supporters for Singularity. Last year we won three HPC Wire uh, Users and Editor Choice Award at Supercomputing, and we know that it's thanks to all you guys. So really thanks for the support, and this is all the people and institutions right now using Singularity on production systems and giving back contributions to the open source Singularity. So once again, thanks to you for uh, these awards. So this is a year update on Singularity. And the next slide is going to hit half or more of half of the people here in this go. So Singularity last year was a monster that was like Bash, Python, C, and they kind of talk each other. It, <laughs> it was really hard for a new open source contributor to jump in and start contributing to Singularity from the user's point of view. From the stability point of view, Python was giving us a lot of dependency issues when trying to move Singularity in between systems. And also, the third reason was People were asking to integrate uh, Singularity with all the cloud tools out there that HPC uh, people are really trying to leverage. Things like Kubernetes, things like uh, cloud native tools. So in order to interact easier and more natively with those tools, uh, we start to consider moving to go uh, to the point on which, on you know, some point around February last year, we started a whole rewire of the code and now Singularity is Python free and it's a C Go project. So it's mostly Go code. We are only using C code for the security bits, like doing the system calls and interacting with the kernel, but all the rest is made in Go. So uh, I always try to get new people into Singularity and I think Go is a language for new people there is really easy to just jump in, read some lines of code, understand the language, of course, and start helping uh, with open source contributions. What do we like uh, a part of the integration with the cloud native uh, tools out there is the concurrency mode of Go uh, as a developer is really easy to track threads and is really easy to uh, know what's happening with your code at runtime. And the last line I'm going to show you in our next slide, uh, what is CN, CNI is the 
container ne networking interface. So right, uh, with the 3.0 version of Singularity, you can start doing port mapping and network virtualization. We faced some challenges, so if you are uh, following the Singularity open source, uh, it was quite of a year moving a code from Bash and Python and taking that to C. So the first uh, main point was uh, using CGO interface. I know in the Go world, uh, CGO is still opinionated, but it's really needed when you're trying to do a uh, security bit and system calls, and, and you needed to control them from a C point of view, because all the C coders here know that C gives you the entire control of the system. We are following the Go standards uh, on packaging, so if uh, you are a regular Go developer that doesn't know anything about container uh, file systems or like the underground of how Singularity works, when you jump in into our code base, you are going to feel familiar in a Go project. We are using vendoring. So this third line is when we say we are Python free because right now if you do a clean git clone, you can start doing make, make install without bothering of having all the Python dependencies and if you have Python 2 or Python 3 and the failure that we, ha we were having with some users already in a newer version of Python trying to compile Singularity some point around two years from now. And so this is really nice now that you can just do a clean git clone and start building Singularity because everything, the vendor and folder is there. So all the dependencies are already in the repo. Uh, packaging. Building a CGO project that complex as Singularity took us a uh, to overthink how auto tools work because auto tools is too complicated for things too much complicated, but not as complicated as a Go project. Go is kind of easy to build. So one of our engineers uh, designed Make It. So if a homemade tool for building RPM and dev packages, the dev is still under work but you can right now jump into the Singularity project and start building your RPM and distributing the RPM package. Differences that we are already seeing against Python is we have a lot of APIs and ecosystems out there that we can start leveraging out of the box. So one of the main releases this year is that Singularity right now can interact uh, with Kubernetes, so if you go to the Scilabs uh, Git group, you can see a CRI repo, and that CRI repo is really how Singularity can integrate with Kubernetes. So thanks to Go, because it gave us just the native API from Kubernetes, and we can just start talking to Kubernetes. Go test, so I'm part of the QA uh, team of Singularity, and this is really nice how just, and we were talking about tests and doing just bash tests, we are moving our simple bash tests uh, from the 2.x version into a more complex and a more robust way of testing Singularity. So if you see Singularity right now on the test portion, we are doing unit testing and integration testing, things that were not happening in the 2.x version. 2.x version was only doing integration testing but not testing at the level of unit, unit testing. So by leveraging Go, uh, Singularity is more robust, a uh, more robust project now because it has a bigger and robust uh, test suite. It's very easy and productive as a developer to write in Go. So rather than trying to understand how the bash script raised some environment variables, Python read it, and code C, which was the 2.x version, uh, right now you can just understand everything by reading the Go code. So it's a single file uh, of Go versus trying to open a bash, Python, and C file and understand what's happening between three, those three files. Go is very open on edit. I know I, I told you that, that that slide was going to choke some of the people here, but we are already seeing people uh, trying the 3.0 version of Singularity on production, and it's very stable and 
I encourage you to try it. One of the big changes a part of moving from Python C to Go is the image format. So right now Singularity is using its own uh, image format called SIF, Singularity Image Format, versus 2.x, uh, people familiar with 2.x, it was, you could use uh, ext 3 images or SquashFS images. So for 3.0, we are using a, a homemade image format, and it, that gives us a lot of new features. So you can store metadata in the headers, so you can see it as a tar file, but optimized for container usage. So you can store your squash effects image in the big object in the middle, so it's a read-only image, but rather than just storing the squash effect image, you can also store metadata in the, in the headers that you can see here. And upcoming maybe in 3.2 or 3.3 version of Singularity, we are going to have a writable overlay that is going to be apart from the signature block. So on the next slide, I'm going to show that also in 3.0, you can sign with a PGP a protocols your containers. So you can sign your containers and send your, those keys and the container to a friend, to a peer reviewer, and they can check that the image is immutable and hasn't changed during the sending or maybe someone uh, switched it for, for another image on the way. So we are very proud of our new image format. And as a developer also, if you are maybe like easy build or tools like uh, that, you can start leveraging the metadata in the headers to tell the scheduler, to tell your runtime how to use that a root, FS, root file system that is in the middle in the uh, squash effect format. So what's new in 3.0 on the cloud side? So right now users can have a container library. So this is apart from Singularity Hub, so people familiar with Singularity Hub, which is uh, supported and maintained by Stanford, and I guess you all know Vanessa. Uh, Scilabs right now has a container library which is optimized for SIF. So you can only pull and push SIF images because it's just for the 3.0 and above. Uh, you cannot push images from 2.x versions. We have a remote build service. So a lot of users will say, were telling us, yeah, Singularity is good, I wanna jump into Singularity, but my university, my institution doesn't allow me to have sudo even in my workstation, in my laptop. So how can I start building my own images and testing my own images before giving them to the system admin? So if you are running into this issue, you can go into the Scilab web page and give us your definition file and we are going to give you back your C file without a sudo need. And last but not least, the key store service. So you can now sign your containers as I was telling you but when you wanna move those keys between hosts, you can use the Scilabs key store service for free, and that way you can sign your container, let's say your workstation, tell your system admin about your keys, and he's going to be able to verify that that container comes from XYG user. So I'm going to show it here, how it looks. So this is the, the Scilabs web page, and you can see up there, sorry, I'm facing you. Uh, this is the library, the remote builder, and the key store. So this is how the library looks. I am signed as Scilabs Ed. This is my login. And, and we have some statistics here from different users, and how are they pulling and pushing their containers. And this is the remote builder. So I, I was telling you, you can drag and drop your definition file into this black, into this white box, or you can start writing your definition file here, and you build it, and we are going to build it for you here with a live output from the cloud infrastructure where this is happening. And after all this, we're going to give users a direct download, so you can just click and download your Singularity image and 
start using it. Or if you don't want to if you don't want to click that link, we are going to give you a library link so your image is going to be stored here. So you cannot download it because you just want to build the image and then pull it from the cluster or pull it from another host. So this is how an image looks when it's stored in the container library. And this is the key store. As you can see here, I have two keys stored, and I can use these keys to sign containers on my host and then share those containers with partners, peer reviewers, and they can verify that that container comes from me with a, a PGP-based key. Okay, I was showing you this. This is how interacting with the library looks, so it's really easy. Uh, Singularity 2.x had the, the pull CLI, but not the push, so 3.0 introduced a push command, so you can push your container into the cloud. You can create tokens, uh, that this is via a web UNI, and you can also, from the CLI, search containers uh, publicly available in the library. So, we have private uh, images and public images as GitHub, as other hubs out there. So this search command is only going to work for public available images. So let's say you are interested in pulling a quick Ubuntu, a quick Fedora image, and you don't want to type library uh, that does slash slash uh, something something Fedora. You just go in Singularity search for me a Fedora image. Singularity search for me a Ubuntu image and we are going to retrieve to you all the public available images that are uh, Ubuntu or Fedora uh, based image. This is how users can interact with a remote builder also from the CLI. So rather than changing all the CLI, we just added a small flag, is dash dash remote. So if you know that you don't have pseudo privileges in your host, you just run singularity build, dash dash remote, and the rest is the same, and you, and you can just point uh, to your definition file, and we are going to build that for you in the cloud from the CLI. So there's no need on going into the web page to use the remote builder. You can use the remote builder from the CLI. For doing this, you do need one UE step, which is uh, the create token. So you need to go to the web page and create your token. That's hard to do from the CLI, the key store. This is how users can interact with the key store from the CLI, so it's really easy. If you don't have a keeper already in your host, Singularity is going to talk with the PGP protocol already in your host and create some keys for you. You can list keys, you can have several keys, not just one key, but several keys stored in the Singularity a, a key folder. You can push them, and you can also search keys as you can search for images. So I have three minutes. Moving away from cloud functionalities, uh, users can now do network virtualization. So you can now do port mapping, set hostname, DNS, uh, create bridges, go wild with uh, network virtualization with Singularity containers. So we are seeing users back in supercomputing as I see some really nice use cases on deploying web services through Singularity and doing port mapping to do remote visualization over GPO clusters. So this is a pretty powerful tool for users. Security, uh, this is mostly for system admins. Singularity is always trying to give more power to the system admins to control the users. Uh, system admins can now add capabilities or remove capabilities depending on the user allowed or not allowed set UID for users and keep privilege. So this dot dash privilege can make users run Singularity inside Singularity, crazy things like that, and a, a security bit that uh, encourage you to read the documentation on how system admin can uh, enhance Singularity documentation from the CLI. Also, uh, we have Sigrus support. Uh, this feature requires running by sudo. Uh, but you can now block or limit the CPU, the memory, the I.O., 
everything that you can block uh, using C groups, you can now block your singularity processes uh, out of the box. And one minute. Uh, sign and verify. So I was telling you when uh, showing you the key store that you can now sign and verify. So this is how the CLI looks when running a signing and verification on your singularity images. Okay. I was going to show demos, but I'm okay. And the last thing that I'm going to show, which is something I really like. is this file. So this file is mostly for system admins. So you can now create white list or black list for keys. So you can say in this cluster, all the singularity images must run signed. And you can create white list and black list. So you can say in this cluster, all images signed with this and this and this, you can create list. Keys are going to run, and let's say you fire some user, you fire some student from the infrastructure, you can add them to the blacklist and just say, okay, this student a key will not run even if he's trying with pseudo privileges. Singularity is going to block that image from running uh, via this configuration file. So this configuration file is really powerful for system admin on blocking and leveraging the signing and verifying feature of the 3.0 version. And with one minute questions. Any questions for people? And we are hiring. We are really interested in getting more developers, people with HPC knowledge, with system related knowledge. So if you're interested in being a container person, Talk to me after this. Any questions? Huh? Oh, no. The, yeah, I switched them. Yeah, because we already had a singularity one on one here at FOSDEM. So the committee really asked me to be more an update than just a one-on-one. -on -one. So that's, that's why. Not yet. So uh, a question here is that if you can install the cloud services of Singularity on premise, like in your own cluster, uh, that feature is coming some point around, let's say, after August, September. So we are working on that. Keep, keep an eye on the Singularity repo. That feature is coming. We are working on that. So you can install the library, the builder, the key store in your host, not depending on, on infrastructure.